Otto Show. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. I'm now going to sing a song with my little boy. Climb upon my knee, sunny boy. Knees? They're more like brass bed knobs. <laughs> now you're 43, sunny boy. I would have been 44, but my mother was very shy. <laughs> there's no way of showing, there's no way of knowing just what you mean to me, sunny boy. Lend us a father then. Get out of it, you poncy little git. <laughs> when there are grey skies, I don't mind those grey skies. I know you don't, because you stay indoors while I go out and around. You make them blue, sunny boy. Friends may forsake me. I'm not surprised you smell like a compost heap on legs. <laughs> Let them all forsake me I still have you, sunny boy You're sent from heaven And I know your word Yeah, 16 years of family allowance at 10 bob That's over 250 quid <laughs> You made a heaven for me right here on earth it might be heaven for you, but it's bleeding hell for me. I mean, what can I do? What do the other boys do? You tried it once, it made you sick. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to get married, Harold. You want to stay with me? I need you here. Until, until you're called to that great rag and bone yard in the sky. Oh, God. <laughs> and the angels grew lonely. Took you because they were lonely. Now I'm lonely too. What's my name? Sunny Boy. <laughs> Is that you, Harold? Ah, it must be the wind. Which reminds me, I must get some Alcatel, sir. <laughs> Is that you, Harold? <laughs> oh, <Lord Lord. laughs> Stupid Greg Burke. Could have given me a heart attack. Just <laughs> see your face. Where did you get that thing? They're having a clean out down at a museum. And look what else I got. What's that, a truss? <laughs> no, it's an old-fashioned chastity belt. I thought it might come in handy when you take out that old biddy from the Darby and Joan. <laughs> she couldn't wear one of them things. Not with her varicose veins. <laughs> it's not for her. It's for you, you dirty little... <laughs> well, if you don't want it, it won't be wasted. I'll use it as a nose bag holder for the horse. <laughs> Which reminds me, how is he? Poor thing. He's on his last legs, Harold. Yeah, so am I after dragging that cart round the streets all day. <laughs> I've decided to put him out of his misery. Funny. For the last couple of weeks, he, he seems to have known he hasn't got long. Yes, I know. Every time we pass a glue factory, he breaks into a gallop. <laughs> Still, look on the bright side, he must be worth a fortune. I mean, there's about 3,000 tubes of glue on legs out there. <laughs> he's not been melted down for glue. N not after all the faithful years of service he's given us. Out in all weathers, no complaints. No strikes. Oh, cool. <laughs> he deserves something more than being melded down for glue. Something more rewarding. Such as? We get more money selling him for horse meat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I better get it over with. But I won't find it easy. Not when he looks up at me with those great big bloodshot eyes. There's an easy way around that. I mean, do the decent thing. Use a blindfold. That's a good idea.
poor old Hercules. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> He'll love it too. Hello, Hercules. Don't worry, Daddy's not going to hurt you. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> shot myself in the foot and it's your fault. Why? You forgot to tell me it was a horse I was supposed to blindfold. <laughs> Tune to the wrong channel, we have not yet jumped in the Thames. <laughs> You're probably wondering at this moment why we are earnless. <laughs> Little Earn, OBE, <laughs> outstanding Butlin's entertainer, <laughs> is behind these curtains awaiting to amaze you with a fantastic trick. He's going to open his wallet. <laughs> Matter of fact, he did it last week. And he was arrested for breaking and entering. <laughs> he got off, it was his first offence. <laughs> but tonight, he... tonight... Tonight... I've told you before about letting stagehands come on, haven't I? <laughs> tonight, can I help you, young man? Don't you know who I am? Of course I do, Elton. Elton? You don't care, do you, Elton? You wear anything. <laughs> now what for getting on? No, I'm not Elton, John. I'm Twiggy. Oh. <laughs> May I say, Miss Twiggy, how much I enjoy you on The Muppet Show? <laughs> you still don't know who I am, do you? Look, I'll give you a clue. Have you seen The Boyfriend? Yes, but don't tell the wife. <laughs> I'm Twiggy, and before we go any further, I don't want you to insult me like you do Des O'Connor. No flat-chested jokes. <laughs> we don't do flat-chested jokes about Des O'Connor. <laughs> Flat singing jokes, yes. You see, I'm an aspiring actress. I'm not surprised, it's very warm in here. <laughs> um, the reason I'm here is that yesterday I got a phone call from Ernie, the funny one, <laughs> she just slipped one in there, have you noticed? <laughs> one in. And Ernie has asked me to appear in one of his plays, what he wrote. <laughs> so I tried to get him on the phone this morning, but his wife said he was in the kitchen drying his hair. Ah. <laughs> yes, well, he does. He dries it under the grill, you see. <laughs> he gives it two minutes each side. You mean that wonderful head of hair isn't his own? Well, it will be as soon as he's finished the payments. <laughs> I must admit, I don't know a lot about his work. What are Ernie's plays about? About half a page, usually. <laughs> but has he mentioned to you about writing a new play? Oh, indeed he has, kind sir. <laughs> he is going to rewrite Romeo and Juliet in that order. <laughs> rewrite Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet? Very close. <laughs> he's going to improve it. When he's finished with it, It'll end up winning a Sun TV award. <laughs> which is something Shakespeare never got. Mind you, he never worked with Noel Gordon. But there are some marvellous speeches for me in that. Romeo! Romeo! Wherefore art thou, Romeo? Oh, yes. Uh, what do you see? Could I have a word? Excuse me. <laughs> You see, that line, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo, it's been cut out, you see. Why? He never gets laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> he changed it to, alas, poor Yorix, I knew him well. <laughs> <laughs> I always gets a laugh if you don't say it carefully. <laughs> but Eric, is there a chance of my meeting Ernie? Indeed there is, Miss Branch. <laughs> 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 Just as soon as... <laughs> Making me laugh, and I had it at rehearsal. <laughs> anyway. Are you going? Oh, no. No, you can meet him as just as soon as he's finished this trick. Watch this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen.
gentleman, little Ernesto, will now perform an impossible feat of escapology. He will escape in ten seconds from this sack, which is chained and padlocked. <laughs> Stop! You thought I was any wise. Well, I'm not, because tonight, Twiggy, former top fashion model, recording artist, film star, this is your song. <laughs> I'm getting married to a girl half my age. I told the doctor, he said it could prove fatal. I said, well, if she dies, she dies. <laughs> I remember the first time I met her, I said, why don't you come back to my place and have a look at my itching? She said, don't you mean my etchings? I said, you don't know what I want you to scratch. <laughs> you know, all these rumors about me being mean started after I'd had a meal with Bob Hope and the waiter paid. <laughs> and he was a very mean waiter. He didn't even leave a tip. Yeah, listen, here's a funny story. There were three storks talking. One said, I'm going to fly over Margate and make twins. The other one said, I'm going to fly over Reading and make a baby boy. The other one said, I'm going to fly over Brighton and put a wind up a few barmaids. Now, listen. <laughs> Don't show me this is ridiculous. I shouldn't be standing here with all this rubbish. We should be doing the subtle jokes. That's the trouble today, everybody's corny. I mean, there's so many lovely subtle jokes about. And the one about the two flies walking up the mirror, and one fly said to the other, that's another way of looking at it. <laughs> I'll never forget my first wife. I try to, but I, uh, I never do. She was a very fat woman. When I took her over the threshold after the wedding, I had to make two trips. <laughs> Oh, that a joke? Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, what is the world coming to? Two dogs walking in the snow. One was an Alsatian, one was a Dachshund. One said to the other, my feet are freezing. The Dachshund said, your feet are freezing. Oh dear. Oh. <laughs> you know, I just bought a car off George Burns, and I know for a fact that doesn't cost him a penny to run it. He told me he'd driven 40 miles to take this chorus girl home. When he got back, he said he'd gone all that way for nothing. <laughs> to the doctor the other day, I said, doctor, I feel like a curtain. He said, pull yourself together. <laughs> he wasn't a very good doctor. I said, you know, doctor, some days I feel like a dog. He said, lie on the couch. I said, I'm not allowed on the couch. <laughs> street the other day, saw a fella walking like that. You know what I mean, lady? You know what I mean? Walking like that. I said, are you a Nancy boy? He said, what are you talking? I said, are you a Nancy boy? He said, of course I'm not. I said, what are you walking like that for? He said, oh dear me, roll a line now. Now listen. <laughs> well, last year, I insured my vacation against rain. So to be on the safe side, I went to Manchester. <laughs> And I was in the cocktail bar in the Midland Hotel, which is next to the YMCA where I was staying. <laughs> and I'm standing in this cocktail bar, and this policeman came in and arrested me for breaking into my wallet. <laughs> I got off. It was my first offense. <laughs> Take that joke home, think about it, and come back tomorrow with a laugh. <laughs> And second thoughts, make it the day after. We'll be closed tomorrow. Once upon a time, there were two Chinamen. Look how many they are now. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Now, here's a funny story the second time around. Now, here's a funny story. I was in bed the other night. The wife woke me up. She was talking in my sleep. I said, what do you want to go and wake me up for? I was having a lovely dream all about mouth auctions. I said, they had little mouths for five bob, medium-sized mouths for ten bob, and big ones for a quid. She said, did they have one like mine? I said, yeah, they were holding the auction in it. <laughs> we are getting subtle, aren't we? <laughs> dear, oh dear. I was walking through Soho the other night. This girl came out of a doorway. She said, want a bit of fun, dearie? I said, you've got to be joking. 
<laughs> I'm old enough to be your father. She said, keep walking, me mother's in the next doorway. <laughs> I was in a pub the other day, you know, this is a funny story. I was in a pub the other day, a woman came in with a parrot. She said, anybody can guess the weight of this parrot, they can make love to me tonight. I said, 40 tons. She said, that's near enough, come on. <laughs> I remember the first night of the honeymoon. She said, am I the first woman who's had a slap with you? I said, if you got to sleep, you will be. <laughs> Tonight's comedians were Groucho Marx, Tony Hancock, Jack Benny, and Max Miller. And it's great to be back, isn't it, Danny? Yes, it is. And may I say, you're looking very beautiful this evening. In fact, you have everything a woman could want. And a little bit more, mate. <laughs> and this is the first time we've appeared together. In fact, I'm so excited, I'm beside myself. <laughs> but on with the show. We're yes. in a packed program tonight. We'll be meeting two boy scouts who will be showing us how to tie a granny knot with the help of a 75-year-old granny. <laughs> <laughs> and a topless strong woman will be showing us an entirely new way of crushing a Tonka toy. <laughs> but here are the news headlines. A woman who has been for the last week squatting on a pole was today persuaded to get off. Doctors say she's okay, but the pole is in the intensive care unit at Warsaw General Hospital. <laughs> After a lorry spilled 40 tons of onions on the M1 today, police asked motorists to use the hard shoulder to cry out. <laughs> and later we'll be meeting a man from the Easter Islands who will be telling us about Easter, a man from the Canary Islands who will be talking about Canaries, and a man from the Virgin Islands who has absolutely nothing to say. <laughs> and now a sketch in which I play a policeman and she doesn't. <laughs> Why are they booing you? <laughs> they're not booing me, they're booing you. And I'll tell you why. Oh, Maggie Thatcher's daughter. <laughs> down Downing Street Way. I'll sit upon Joe Gormley. And when he screams more pain. <laughs> she's got us in a terrible state. With cues for the dull here, yeah, watch it, mate. I'm still in control. That's why Ted Heath is in the alley. <laughs> On Maggie Thatcher's door, stare. He's wondering when I'll be guarding Arthur Scargill. Or oh, maybe Tony Ben. But I'm the one who's here to stay On Maggie Thatcher's doorstep Down Downing Street away You can turn that rubbish off, there's something very important on at three o'clock. It's not racing again, is it? Racing? What are you talking about racing? It's Her Majesty's speech. It's your actual royalty. So is this. Look, King Kong ain't your royalty. <laughs> he stands to reason. I mean, he ain't real. I mean, all he is is a big, airy, ignorant twit. He's like you then, isn't he? <laughs> Except for the air. <laughs> no. I mean, if he's a great big ignorant airy no. twit, what I do mean, you think you are? No. I know what I'd choose between the two no. of you. Oh, yes, I do. No. King Kong any day, what? Shut up, you silly boo! <laughs> Might learn something. Look, I mean, lost me Fred now, and I lost me Fred. <laughs> Look, your King Kong ain't real, not like your Queen. I mean, it stands to reason. I mean, your queen, she's real. She's your flesh and blood. She's live. 
Get out. They recorded her speech in June when she was at Balmoral. <laughs> of course they didn't, you silly moo. I mean, look, look. You see, this is an inconvenience to Her Majesty on Christmas Day. I mean, while she's addressing her loyal subjects, her pudding's getting cold. <laughs> See Prince Philip standing for cold pudding. <laughs> anyway, there's no need to switch it over. It's on the commercial channel and all. I'm leaving it on commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Not having her gracious majesty coming on, waving to her subjects, and then some bloke popping up saying, it's what your bloody right arm's for. <laughs> Look, it's live, I tell you, it's live! I'll prove it to you, you silly moo! Pig. <laughs> the Christmas broadcast by Her Majesty Lord, the Queen. You can tell it's live. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, you man. <laughs> <laughs> On this special occasion, my husband and I, and I, and I. <laughs> It's live, is it? Live! Shut up! She's just nervous, that doll! It's live! Yourself. What do you want to go and do that for? <laughs> Silly moo. Pig. I was having a smashing dream. What were you doing? Drowning in a vat of beer? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, move yourself. I've got work to do. Well, I haven't. The good book says, Six days shalt thy labour, the seventh thy shall rest. Never mind what Joe Gormley says. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about Joe Gormley. I'm talking about him up there. The Almighty. He who has the whole world in his hands. And Harold Wilson's no better either. <laughs> look, look, I'm talking about him who made the world in six days. Yeah. But I bet he didn't take Wednesday afternoon off to go and watch West Ham play. <laughs> oh, I had a doctor's certificate for that. I mean, I had high blood pressure. Oh, yeah. But only after you'd seen the way they played. <laughs> no, why don't you shut up? You might learn something. What I'm trying to say is, him up there made the world in six days. We could have done with him on our garden shed. <laughs> Easily no. installed in 20 minutes, the instruction said. No. It's taken you 12 weeks up to now, and there's still no. only two walls up. Look, no. look, no. shut up, you can't burn me bloody finger now. <laughs> look, no. what I'm trying to say is this, look. Look, I lost me bloody thread now, and I lost me thread. <coughs> Temper too, by the sounds of it. I mean, stands the reason. I've always been a religious man. The good book says, on the Sabbath thou shalt rest. I mean, if I was to work, I'd be blaspheming, wouldn't I? That's why I'm going to back on that couch, I'm going to have a kip. So shut up and leave me alone! <laughs> Silly moon. <laughs> I take it this is the place then? What place? Rent a tart. <laughs> Certainly not. This is a respectable marriage bureau. Now have a seat and I will take down your particulars. You will do no such thing. <laughs> do sit down. Now, what can I do for you? Well, it's more a case of what I can do for you, really. 
I've decided to put myself on the open market. And when the birds get to know that I want to nibble at the nuptials, this place is going to be like the opening day of the January sales. Well, that rather depends. Why have you decided to get married? Well, I don't feel I should keep me to myself. I mean, why should the female species be denied this perfect specimen of manhood? Hmm. What is your name? Anthony Aloysius Hancock. No doubt you've heard of me? No, never. Oh, you're the one. <laughs> How old are you? Twenty-two. Oh. Twenty-five. Oh, very well, thirty-nine, but that's my last offer. And your address? Townhouse or country residence? Oh, either. Railway cuttings, East Cheam. What religion are you? C of E or R C? Well, as I play the organ in the chapel, you better put me down as a rhythm Methodist. <laughs> There isn't much point in being a Catholic round our way. All the fish shops are closed on a Friday. Do you have any physical deformities? How dare you, madam? I'll have you know that when that great engineer in the sky put me on the production line, he knew what he was doing. I mean, I'm not one of your Friday night jobs. I'll have you know that my body is the talk of each gene. Oh, why is that? I've got no curtains on my bathroom window. <laughs> what is your status? Are you a bachelor, widower or divorcee? I should just write untouched by human end. And have you any distinguishing marks on your body? Well, I do have a mole. Where? You mind your own business. Yes, well, I think that all seems to be in order. Oh, good. Now, would you like to look through the photographs of the women we have available? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Dear, oh, dear. Number 35, she's dying to get married. Married? She should be muzzled. <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. You've not got anything here for me. I mean, I'm wasting my time. I might as well go curb crawling outside the Darby and Joan Club. Before you go, look at number 50. Oh, very well. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes, that is very nice, yes. Don't bother to wrap her. I'll take her with me. I just think it's fair to warn you that that photograph was taken some time ago. Oh, I don't care. I don't care. No, no, no. That's the one I want to marry. You're sure? Positive. Right. In that case, the answer is yes. <laughs> oh no, madam, you're making a mistake. <laughs> well, stone me. This is ridiculous, isn't it? Look at this, a man of my calibre. Just to think of it. Last week I was dining at the Savoy, you know. And here I am, reduced to having a Levis's with a hoi polloi and a British Royal buffet. Yes? What do you want? A civil tongue for a start, my good woman. For all you know, I might be Egan Rone. But you're not. How do you know? Because he always comes in here on a Friday. <laughs> now, what do you want? I would like to participate as some of the culinary mysteries of British Rail. For instance, what's this moth-eaten looking lot here? Animal, vegetable or mineral? They're pork pies, fresh today. Fresh? You must be joking. I mean, look at this here. I can just see Arthur Negus with that. <laughs> oh, yes, this probably dates back to the Battle of Trafalgar. Could have been used as a cannonball. <laughs> it's no wonder Nelson lost an eye, I can tell you. I don't care what you say. They're fresh pork pies. Fresh by astrakhan collar. I bet if I was to cut into one of those, I'd find the mummified remains of Pinky and Perky. <laughs> oh, yes, look at that, just as I thought. The pork's gone on strike, it's empty. What do you expect me to do, stuff it? You took the words right out of my mouth, man. <laughs> oh, forget the pie, I'll have a custard tart. Ah, no tea! <laughs> That's my job. <laughs> <laughs> well, that wasn't very hygienic, was it? Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Forget the tart, I'll have a tea. No milk with a piece of lemon. This is a buffy, not a flaming green grocer. <laughs> Sugar? Yes, please. <laughs> Just a minute, I only wanted one. <laughs> Just a minute, you've just dangled two of your digits in my tea. And your hands are probably covered in germs. Right now, there'll be five million microbes doing the backstroke in there. 
It's a good job I'm not a topless waitress or they'd be doing the oh, best. Oh, man, man. <laughs> no, 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 I'll have a clean cup. Certainly. <laughs> oh, that does it. I refuse to patronise an establishment that is unhygienic. I will take my business elsewhere. Good day to you, madam. Here, hang on a minute. What about my bill? But I haven't done anything. That's not my fault, is it? You've ruined my pork pie, handled my custard tart, and I'm not allowed to pour the tea back once it's left the pot, so that'll be three and nine. Oh, but this is ridiculous. It's legalised mugging. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear, here. There you are. Here. Yeah. Just a minute. I said three and nine. There's only three and seven here. Yes, but I'm entitled to tuppence back on the empty, aren't I? <laughs> hello and good evening to you. And hello and good evening to him. Here are the results of the show business personality races at Knott's Burke Park today. Bruce Forsyth won his race by a chin, Ringo Starr won his by a nose, and Racco Welsh was disqualified. <laughs> <laughs> and the, uh, the oil slick reported off the Isle of Wight early this morning has since been identified as eight black and white minstrels out for their early morning swim. <laughs> Yesterday, a chemist shop was raided. The thief took everything except the bus developing cream, that stuff that cures night starvation, and a pair of art supports. Police are now looking for a well-endowed raver with flat feet. <laughs> and at Guy's Hospital today, a famous gourmet refused the transplant of a kidney, unless he could have liver and onions with it as well. <laughs> and at an auction in Chelsea yesterday, a number of pawnbroker shop signs fetched only 50 pence each. When asked why prices had fallen so low, a spokesman said, well, they dropped off quite a bit during the freeze. <laughs> The famous, the famous Amsterdam clog dancing team arrived at Heathrow Airport today barefooted. A spokesman blames Dutch Elm disease. <laughs> and Madame Tussauds have said that they are not, after all, going to melt down their model of Mrs Mills. Instead, they're going to stick a wick in the top of her head and sell her as an everlasting nightlight. <laughs> and, and finally, finally, uh, flower lovers reported this morning that they had seen Kew Gardens moving, but after a closer inspection, it turned out to be Dorothy Squires on her way home from a concert. <laughs> and now over to see the state of the party and meet our host, Mike Garwood. So it's good night from him, and it's good night from him. Girls, have a gladiola. Go on, have a gladiola. <laughs> yes, darlings, it's me, Dame Edna Everidge, housewife, megastar, and ugly sister. <laughs> it's so lovely to be back in the old country again because, of course, we have things in Australia that you don't have here like food and sunshine <laughs> and Michael Parkinson. <laughs> Dear Michael, don't you just love those little grey side boots? <laughs> Funny how the rest of them stays dark. <laughs> don't suppose that naughty little Michael uses something, do you? <laughs> of course, we don't have Shirley Williams in Australia, but we do have lots of people with hair just like hers. We call them Aborigines. <laughs> That's a little Australian joke, darlings. But I can't stand here gossiping all night, much as I'd love to, because I've got to get ready for the ball. Buttons! <laughs> Don't do that, darling. Makes me so nervous. Now, where's my sister? Uh, she's in the kitchen, uh, mixing up a great pile of polyfiller. Oh, making up her face, is she? <laughs> there you go again, making your usual little quiet entrance. Isn't she bashful, viewers? <laughs> oh, I don't have to listen to this rubbish. <laughs> Well, you've got lots of rubbish of your own, haven't you, darling? <laughs> like the dress you're wearing for a start. Ignore her. You see, I'd been a panto star for 25 years. Dame and damsel. I was a wonderful sleeping beauty. A fantastic Goldilocks. And an amazing Puss in Boots. 
And quite a little shocker in Timothy White's as well. I auditioned once to play a dwarf in Snow White. Oh, and did you get the part? No, but I was on the short list. <laughs> Buttons, go and change your braces. They're all wrong with that jacket. You hate me, don't you? You, you really hate me, don't you? <laughs> now, how can I make myself look like an ugly sister? Stay as you are, darling. <laughs> Have you ever been to Australia? You should go. You'd love it there. I love it anywhere. As a matter of fact, I went all over your country. And did you see much of our wonderful Australian wildlife? Oh, you mean Rolf Harris. <laughs> uh, dear Rolfie, he's as famous in Australia as Cran and Margarine. <laughs> They're asking questions about him in the house as well. <laughs> but I do love him, I really do. Walking around with his little paintbrush in one hand and his little didgeridoo in the other. <laughs> you know, darling, I think you look as pretty as a picture. The Mona Lisa? No, the creature from the Black Lagoon. <laughs> Here, there's a nasty little crack in this mirror. That's not a nasty little crack. It's your mouth. <laughs> well, I don't like it. I'm not surprised. The last time I saw a face like that, it had two hands on it and chimed every half hour. <laughs> if I could just make one teeny weeny little suggestion about your face. Why don't you get that adorable Ted Moat to double glaze it for you? You won't find one line on my face, and I owe it to three things. Early nights, clean living, and polyfiller. <laughs> but stand up, darling, and let me look at you. Oh, lovely, but I think you should have worn blue. To match my eyes? No, to match your jokes. <laughs> But enough of this panto banter. It's time for me to get off with a song. And that's about the only thing you will get off with tonight, darling. <laughs> oh, we both made a barrel of money Cos we dress up in drag and we're funny With flowers in our hair And chest full of air Side by side Old and up in our frocks we feel fancy And no one would dare call us Nancy Cos it's really a fact Everything's still intact Side by side The Bat Cave on a spring afternoon in downtown Downing Street, where the money from the IMF is being closely guarded by our Cape Crusader, Batman Healy. <laughs> Now, I would have come down the VAT pole, but it uh, could have affected the balance of payments. <laughs> now, before we go any further, I hope you've noticed it's not only Angela Rippon who's got a nice pair of legs. <laughs> I'm VATman, and it's my job to strike terror into my enemies. For instance, it was me who rid Downing Street of Joker Heath. <laughs> he was the villain who made all our citizens work a three-day week. Of course, they were furious. They were quite happy working a two-day week. <laughs> Who is that approaching the vat cave? <laughs> By the drop ditches of you, Scanlon. <laughs> it's Kitty the Catwoman. That man. They say you are a great fighter. Well, you have to be walking about dressed like this. <laughs> You can't beat the old ones, can you? <laughs> what brings you here, Kitty? It's obvious, isn't it? I've got a soft spot for you. <laughs> My word, she's got me by the short and curly. <laughs> You see, I like my men to be virile, sensuous, sexy, and modest. Well, I think I've got three out of four there. <laughs> little does he know that I'm really after his assets. And little does she know my assets are frozen. Now <laughs> this is getting us nowhere, how would you like me to make a clean breast of things? <laughs> Oh, 
Do you know that's the best offer I've had all week? Well, I have been sent by the IMF. They want me to steal all the money they loaned you. <laughs> by the 77 chins of Cyril Smith. <laughs> it's a muggy mugger. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll get her. Oh dear, me transistorized bat gun's broken. Well, you must have got your transistors crossed. Oh no, I often stand like this. Now I have you in my power. Tell me where the IMF money is hidden. No, I'll never tell. That money is to help increase old age pensions. <laughs> for better housing, for better hospitals, and to help Britain become the great country she used to be. And there's another reason why the IMF can't have the money back. What's that? I've been a silly billy and spent it. 